Well, here's my next project. She's a 1946 Cessna 140. We've got her stripped. We're gonna polish this whole plane, right? I'm gonna polish this whole damn thing. I don't know what I'm getting myself into, but anyway, I've been researching a little bit, doing that kind of thing. But first of all, I just wanna introduce you to this old girl. She's got a C85 Continental in her. She's 85 horse. You know, back in 1946, this is pretty basic setup. This was the plane to have. After everyone came back from the war, you know, they had a lot of, they had a lot of pilots and stuff and they built a lot of these things. She's pretty cool. Uh, a friend of mine, Chris Newton, who is a uh, CFI instructor. He also owns the Mooney. You've guys seen some of my other videos. He's gonna be getting his tail dragger endorsement in this thing starting next week. And basically I'm in here, just checking out what we need to do to this thing before that all happens. So I've already made my first tool for this thing because I didn't have a way of like pushing this thing in and out of the hangar. And um, you know, a, a regular tricycle style airplane where it has the front wheel, you know, that's up here in the front, you just grab hold of that thing and with a pull handle and you can drive it anywhere. Well, on the tail dragger, you know, this back wheel wants to do whatever it wants to do. So I actually made this handle. Now I've seen some on the internet that kind of looked like this a little bit, but this thing here, it's all aluminum. And it kind of pivots, you know, right on where the, the axle sits there. And uh, anyway, so then you can steer the wheel, but this thing only weighs 1.7 pounds. I mean, I kind of got a little ridiculous about it. I even have a titanium bolt in it and it collapsed together so it can go behind the seat. So when you go and fly into somewhere, you can move it around and have that with you. And it's only 1.7 pounds. So it's way better than the ones I see on the internet at eight to 10 pounds or something like that. You don't want to carry that extra weight in these planes because they're super sensitive to weight. So inside this thing, man, she is, she's pretty cool. She's nostalgia, let me tell you. Everything in here is the way it was basically when 1946 rolled around, except for some, some radio upgrades, you know, and a transponder. But basically you have a throttle control, you have a primer, to get the, the gas to the carburetor. And you actually have just a pull uh, start button. So it just pulls and it actually just actuates a solenoid that's right on the starter. So it takes out some of that uh, electronics that were not even back then. So, it, but it's more uh, fail safe because it's, uh, it's mechanical. You don't have to worry about it going through an electric switch and blah, blah, blah. There's no back seat in these things. And all it'll take is two people. I think it's got like a load weight of like 550 pounds, I believe, somewhere in there. Don't quote me on that, but we're still learning things on this thing. So right now I'm currently removing like a lot of this epoxy and stuff like that that's still on the, the ailerons. And uh, my process right now is it's a stripper and you paint her on and wipe her off, use a plastic uh, little squeegee deal and try and get as much of it off as you can. For those that haven't seen an airplane engine before, these things actually are like a VW. They're opposed, right? And, um, you know, there's no cooling system, whatever, besides that hole and that big fin right there. That big propeller is blowing air through here, you know, to help cool these cylinders and stuff like that. But these things actually have uh, two spark plugs for each uh, cylinder, and it also has two magnetos separately so it has a a backup system per se that actually if one of them should fail you still have another one that you can run on so this thing hasn't been polished yet but you can see if you look at it you can see how it, the aluminum looks and i'm not saying it's pitted but you know it, it has some uh what i want some spotting to it and things like that i don't think that all of this is gonna buff out. I honestly don't because this is this is 020 thousandths aluminum. All the wings are 020. Um, so you can't sit there and get after this thing and you can't really sand it because these are all blind rivets. You know, these are blind rivets and you see those little dots are there for a reason. You don't wanna sand on these things at all. So this is the learning process. Um, it's gonna be pretty damn cool when it's done. I don't know if you guys have seen a a polished Cessna 140 before, but we'll probably end up having maybe a couple vinyl stripes on it or something. So another thing I did is I just did one little quick test spot. So, but 
if you look real close, you can see the scratches that are in the aluminum. Now I didn't sand it or anything like that. I just basically, I cleaned it. I hit it with, um, first thing I hit it with was this new shine. Um, this here is like a, a cutting, a heavy corrosion surface repair style um, goop, you know, that you throw on there with your pad. I did a, a couple different processes on it. This took about, I don't know, this was probably about 10 minutes worth of work right here. But I got to figure out here, and maybe some of my folks out there that follow me and stuff, maybe we can figure out how I can get some of these scratches out of here. I'm not sure uh, what it's going to take just yet, and especially it's on an airplane, so I know I don't want to get after it with sandpaper and that kind of thing. But I probably could micro sand it, you know, to get some of that stuff out. But there's a lot of things, you know, there's like little dents here and there, but that's actually filler. So there's nothing that's going to happen there. We're actually talking about maybe putting uh, vinyl on the tips of the wings, you know, and have vinyl on that. So that'll have color. So some of this stuff here won't show, but otherwise, I mean, it's in pretty decent shape. So I'm trying a couple different systems. This first system that I got is Buff Pro. Now, basically it looks like it's got an angle grinder hanging on the side of it. And it's got this, you know, oh, approximately like six to eight inch roller buffer, basically that's on it. It's got three different pads on it. So I started with the, uh, the heavy cut bowl with the heavy cut um, polishing compound. And it was pretty rough. You know, I, I've polished stuff in the past and I felt like maybe that the fatness, the bigness of this wasn't enough pressure on it to like, get into it that hard but we'll just have to see i've always had like an angle an angle grinder with a you know a six inch polishing wheel on it uh the next thing that i have here is this machine here now keep in mind i bought all this stuff myself and this is a cyclone uh, and I, I got on some internet sites and people said oh man you gotta have a cyclone blah 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 so anyway so what i did is i changed pads but when i bought this setup they sent me the three different polishing pads like this one here is supposed to be the polishing wool that comes in after you do the heavy cut and then you go to the the finishing you know the finishing roll but hell when i got this one here hell don't even fit the machine it's got the got the wrong damn it's got like two of the same ends in it see how that one is and it's got a damn bearing one on this side where it's supposed to have like a hex here and a bearing on one side so that way you can change this thing real fast. You just pull this deal up right here and boom, you can pop the pad out. But here I struggled for a little while and I'm like, cause this was the first change I was doing. I'm like, well, what the hell is that? So I had to call these cats on Monday. Maybe they'll make this right with me. And uh, maybe they can also give me some pointers about how to polish this thing. Anyway, so after I got done with this, then I came back in with the Cyclone. I hit it with these pads here with a finishing compound. And then I stuck this wool pad here so it's a cashmere deal or whatever you want to say. So I stuck that on the buffer and then went over it real quick. And I mean, there's no swirl marks whatsoever in that thing. You know, I mean, it looks pretty good, but just, uh, it just has some scratch and stuff. So I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit. So you can see here where I've stripped these and now I'm, I'm working on these, getting all this last part of this epoxy. You can kind of see it starting to bubble up a little bit, but I'm gonna tell you what, this epoxy is gonna be really tough to get off. And I'm thinking possibly that it's gonna take uh, maybe some thousand grit or something like that to get some of this stuff off. So, but I mean, I've worked really hard on these and there's still, you know, a couple areas where there's still some epoxy on them, but hell, I still got to do all this underneath yet. You know, it's been started, but it hadn't been finished. It's going to be a workout. Anyway, it's going to be a really cool, exciting project. Um, like I said, I'm new to the aviation deal and, um, my friend, Chris, uh, is letting me attack this thing, you know? And uh, it's gonna be an awesome experience. I hope you guys follow along with this. I know it's not a drag racing deal, uh, anything like that, but she's got a motor, pistons, and all that other kind of crap, and it flies, flies out there. So hopefully this old girl is gonna be in the air next week. That's why I didn't wanna to polish too much on it. But it's gonna be in the air next week and Chris will finalize his tail dragger endorsement and um, then I can start my journey on becoming a private pilot.